is Bala Food. And today we are in Ascona at Fundasur Majid with the lovely Chiara Magni. Painter from Italy, she had an exhibition here and that is what I want to talk to you about. Mm -hmm. How did the exhibition go? It was actually very nice, very exciting. All right. Yeah. What made you, you live in Italy. Yeah. Where do you live? I live in a beautiful place. You know the Garda Lake? Yes. Yeah, I'm very close to it. It's All beautiful, right. lake is beautiful, countryside is beautiful, very inspiring. But that's like two, three hours away from here. Oh, yeah, if you're lucky. If I'm lucky. Yeah. yeah. Right. So how, what, what made you do an exhibition in Switzerland? Because lucky enough, I have a lot of collectors in this area. Mm -hmm. So, and then basically at some point, uh, I got called by the Fondazione and they want me to do an exhibition here. Okay. Yeah, it was actually very nice. So how long did the exhibition go? One month. One month. Yeah. One month. And did it go well? Did you... It was a very nice. Very so nice. sold everything 100%? No, everything, but we did well. Yeah. All right, so you don't have to carry a lot back. <laughs> no, not much. <laughs> Good. Um, well, we had a look at your paintings. Yeah. Um, you led me through the gallery before. Mm -hmm. uh, very lovely, the colors, the... The, what did you call it? The bright expressionism? Yeah, bright expressionism. Okay, so is that a term that you coined? Is it, did you come up with that? I did, I did. So, yeah, I can tell you about it. Please do. So basically, I've been doing this for several years now, okay? And I've sold many hundreds of paintings all over the world. And then at some point, like my style, my signature style, came out so strong mm -hmm. that they couldn't like stop it, okay? I, no, I didn't want to stop it, of course, but it was so powerful. Then I said, you know, I always called myself an impressionist, mm -hmm. but then I felt that I didn't belong to that category like completely. Mm -hmm. So I was looking for my, my definition, like how to define my style. Mm -hmm. So at the end of 2020, after like even like everything we went through worldwide was like incredible, but I somehow managed to expand a lot mm -hmm. and sell a lot, and uh, I got a lot of new collectors and art lovers. Was, During this COVID time. Yeah, despite everything, I think the art can really do something for us. So probably also other people feel the same. Mm -hmm. Um, so I said, okay, maybe I should come up with a name for it, okay, because, mm -hmm. of course, I love impressionism and I love expressionism, okay. So I wanted to find this meeting point mm -hmm. between impressionism and expressionism, okay. And I said, I don't want to be, like, arrogant and say that I am the only one that, you know, it, it was not easy to come up with a style. It was not easy to, like, to tell that I was the one creating a style. Do you mm -hmm. see what I mean? Because I always, I don't know, then I was like, what people are gonna think? Are they gonna think that I'm stuck up and that I want to redefine art? Like, who is this one? Like, who she thinks she is? Something like that, right? Uh, but then I said, okay, I wanna do it. I wanna do it because I wanted to find my voice and I want to inspire other artists. And I'm sure there are many artists that can find himself in my style. Okay, so, so yeah, it takes the freedom that you can find in expressionism, so mm -hmm. color are not realistic, mm -hmm. uh, perspective are not realistic, mm -hmm. and they're a little bit crazy, but I wanted to take away all of the drama and suffer mm -hmm. and sadness from expressionism. Mm -hmm. So I use that painting style, but in a happy way, like impressionism does. So yeah, so I think I come up with a very interesting name. Oh, that, it is a very interesting name, and also yeah. the concept behind it is very interesting. Uh, I have also a lot of collectors from the US and many other places, like all over the world. Mm -hmm. It did actually grow and went much better, I think for two reasons. Mm -hmm. The first one, and maybe most important, is that I found like the balance with myself. So probably my way of approaching it, mm -hmm. it's just a mental, like a mindset. Like a switch. Yeah. yeah. So my way of seeing it was like, okay, so this is what I do. Mm -hmm. Those are my like limits, mm -hmm. but there's a lot of freedom within those limits. Mm -hmm. So I define what I do. Mm -hmm. And also, I think from the collective viewpoint, they feel they can understand better. Mm -hmm. So even if 
I could not lean into my creativity, like mm -hmm. not at all. Mm -hmm. But I think that for them it's easier to understand if I define what they are collecting, what they are buying, or which type of art they are supporting. So what is um, what is selling most right now? What what what, what is the demand? Where is the demand highest right now? So I am crazy about having everything in place and statistic, mm -hmm. and I want to have record of everything. Oh, so right. a percentage of everything, like landscape, animals, whatever, like everything is. I'm, I'm an artist, but I'm also an a manager. You're an analytical artist. Yeah, right. very much, very much. And I need to say that almost every category sell. Like I sell, for example, like almost the 90% mm -hmm. within every category. Mm -hmm. uh, the one that actually sold out the most and like fast are animals and landscape for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and okay. I love them a lot. Yeah. Well, you have, uh, I saw the tigers, I saw the fox, the memory of the fox. Oh, yeah? That is one uh, that, that you have a very personal I do. commitment to. Mm -hmm. um, also, what I saw was that you are um, offering customized paintings now. Absolutely. What does that mean exactly? It means that if you like my style and if you like how I'm actually approaching mm -hmm. the art, you can... Uh, contact me and we can uh, work together mm -hmm. on a custom piece. So it's going to be the, the size that you choose and the subject that you choose. Mm -hmm. um, I usually offer some guidance, okay, mm -hmm. and actually collectors do ask me, like they, they will ask what size do you recommend or what color palette, mm -hmm. how, do, how can we create the composition together. Mm -hmm. Uh, but then at the end, the painting is like is like something that you dream and I create it. So okay. yeah. So for those people like me who are too bad at painting and can't do it themselves, they come to you. Yeah, and you can still dream it, and then I will print it. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. So that is a very interesting approach. Is that big in the industry? Do many people do that? I, oh, yeah. I mean, I've never really encountered like, an artist that offers that. Of course, you can ask and mm -hmm. they do, but I've never. Uh, and kind of artist that actively says, hey, look, I do this. It is, actually. There are some painters that decide not to do this or to offer very, very, very few. Mm -hmm. But usually it is common, mm -hmm. yeah. And I think, at least for me, like for a painter, it's very important to have this connection. Because mm -hmm. um, I'm always curious, okay? Because I have my idea of what I like mm -hmm. and what I don't. Um, but it's also interesting to know what the other person like. Like, what do you think consider nice? For example, maybe there is a subject that I would never even cross my mind to paint, mm -hmm. and then you introduce me to the subject, and then I'm like, oh yeah, it's beautiful, mm -hmm. you know? Because um, yeah, it creates a different type of connection with the collector, very deep, very personal. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, what is the main reason that? Um, Art collectors collect art? Interesting question. Uh, of course, I can all, only give you my viewpoint on it uh, and my experience. Because mm -hmm. um, I began this a while ago, like why back. And I remember selling like a drawing mm -hmm. at the very beginning for like, I don't know, $65 or something like that. So I was like, I don't know, uh, this friend. I, I want to take it from way back, but go, so you can... Go back, go back, I it's mean, fine. Yeah, so I did this drawing with soft pastels. I, li I love soft pastels, they're very nice. Um, so yeah, I sold this painting. Uh, okay, and then I said, hmm, okay, maybe I can do a career <laughs> with this. <laughs> when um, was this? When? 2014? Uh, yeah, before probably, before. yeah, a few years before. Um, and then, and then I, keep, I kept on selling, 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 and of course, a little, little by little, I raised the price, of course, because the demand was much, much higher. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, at some point, I was like, okay, but do people, like, why do people collect? Mm -hmm. Okay, because of course, at the very beginning, like the very beginning when nobody know you, you sell to friends and family just for, mm -hmm. I mean, with this one, for example, I mean, she was from Canada, and the main um, game went on, sh on shipping anyway, so I don't know, like... <laughs> um, but then I was like, why do people collect? Mm 
-hmm. okay? Because for some point, like up to some point, I was like, okay, because they know me, maybe because they think I'm funny, or I don't know, maybe because I'm a young woman, whatever. Then I stopped and I said, wait a minute, like they are giving you real money for something that you create, it's not they pay you with a handshake or monopoly money. Mm -hmm. So so there must be something else mm -hmm. because you're not selling yourself, you're mm -hmm. selling your views, okay? Mm -hmm. And then I realized, and I said, oh my God, these people really like me. Like, these collector are real. I know it's crazy. I know it's almost stupid, but that's what happened, okay? Because I always like to stay humble and be very careful. No, and well, I, it's not stupid at all. It uh, makes sense. I know, but I never believe, like, I never believe, like, oh my God, I'm really making it as a painter, mm -hmm. okay? I'm really becoming more known. And it's hard to tell yourself that you're making it. Okay, because this is a, such a big dream and really making a living with your art, mm -hmm. you pay your bills, you pay your clothes, you pay your house, you, you know, like, yeah. like, like a real job with all of this passion connected with it. So I was like, wow, this is happening. Uh, then I realized that probably people really enjoy my art mm -hmm. because of my views of my creation. Yeah. Uh, so I actually just begin asking them and I say, so why me? Like, there are so many painters, mm -hmm. so why me? Why this painting? So I wanted to do like little... So there's the analytical... Yeah, came out again, again. Yeah, yeah, again. So I say, why? And they come out with all these different reasons uh, and I, I realized that they were really investing on me, mm -hmm. okay? Of course, they did like the painting because mm -hmm. the first, actually, no, the main reason is the emotional feeling they get. So they look at a painting and something happens. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know, like they remind of some places or a moment or the color palette, something happened. But then, you know, when you do this as a professionist, you need to think with the fact that you need to be collectible, mm -hmm. that you need to present yourself in a way where people will feel comfortable. It's not that you create a painting in one year mm -hmm. and then, I don't know, but you know, like yeah. you need to, and I feel that I own them to be successful mm -hmm. and always more successful because mm -hmm. I really want my collector from the first one to the last one to mm -hmm. really have a piece on the, on the walls that increase in the values mm -hmm. like every year. Yeah. So all of my, like, my willingness and my desire to be better and mm -hmm. more successful and more inspiring is also because I own them. They do, like, they believed in me yeah. at the very beginning. Okay, well, that's, that's, that's nice. Huh? Yeah. That's very nice and very noble. Yeah.